I have set up a simple example here. I have added a card on the page, and for the stylings, I set the position to fixed, the width to 200 pixels, the height to 400 pixels, and the border ridges to 20 pixels, and I've made the background color green, and the padding to 20 pixels, and I'm adding some scroll animation here, and for the animation, it's just changing the color from the green to red. And for the HTML and the body, it's similar to the previous video. We have the height to 200 viewport on the root element. And for the body tag, it's 100 viewport. And I've added some background color and I'm centering the content. Similar to the previous video, we expect that if we scroll the page, the background color should change. But that doesn't work. And actually, the background color should start with green, but it's now red. Let's see what's wrong here. Do you notice any difference here? The only difference here is that we are defining the animation timeline above the animation shorthand. But does the order matter here? And actually, yes, it does matter. And the reason for that is because the animation shorthand resets the animation timeline value. But note that we can't use the animation timeline in the shorthand. The shorthand is just for resetting that value. So to fix it, we have to move the animation timeline below the animation shorthand. So if we try that and save, it works as before. Now let's get to the topic of this video, and we will start by doing an experiment. What if we make the card element scrollable? Will scrolling the card element cause the animation to run, or the root element will still be the element that controls the animation? So let's try to find out. So I'm going to add some content to the card element to make it scrollable. So let's go down here, and let's say lorem ipsum, save, and to make it scrollable, let's change the overflow to scroll. Let's go here and say overflow, scroll, save. So now we can see the scroll bar. Let's try to scroll it. So that doesn't change the animation. Let's try to scroll the root element, and that works. Now the reason this works is because if you remember in the previous video, we learned that the way the browser attached the timeline is based on the nearest scrolling ancestor. So to review that again, let's quickly open up the div tools. So the element we are animating is the card. It will start by the first parent, which is the body. And the body here is not scrollable. So it will go to the next parent, which is the root element. And the root element here is the scrollable one. And that's the default behavior, which brings us to an important point here. When you say animation timeline scroll, this function does two things. First, it creates the timeline. Second, it uses that timeline. So even though it's just a single keyword, but it does these two things. So the first thing, it creates the timeline. And it has to decide where it should create that timeline. And as we learned, it creates it for the nearest scrolling ancestor. And actually, there's a keyword for that, which is nearest. That's the default value. And if we try to scroll again, it will still be the root element that has the timeline. And if you remember in the previous video, we visualized the timeline as an arrow that starts from the top of the scroller all the way to the bottom. And you can imagine that this is a timeline that progresses the animation. And you can see that the timeline is defined on an element different than the element we are animating. So the root element has the timeline, and the element we are animating is the one that is using the timeline. So we can change the timeline from the root element to the element itself by replacing nearest with self. Let's try this and save. So now when I try to scroll the root element, the animation doesn't run, but when I try to scroll the card, the animation runs as expected. Okay, so now let's try another experiment. What if we wrap the card with a wrapper? Which one will contain the timeline? So let's try that. Let's close that first. And to create a wrapper, let's go down, and we're gonna say wrapper, and put the card inside of it. Let's style it here, say wrapper. Let's give it some batting for two pixels. Let's give it some border, two pixels, solid white, some border radius. And let's move position fixed to it. And let's save. So now we can see the wrapper. Let's make it scrollable by limiting its height. Let's say height, 200 pixels, and overflow, scroll. Let's save. Now, if we scroll the root element, it doesn't work. If we scroll the wrapper, it also doesn't work. If we scroll the card, it works. And that's because we are still using self in the scroll function. Now, if we remove it and save, now if we scroll the root, it doesn't work. But now if we scroll the wrapper, it works. And that's what we should expect. Because if you remember, the default value here is nearest. 
and if we open up the dev tools we can see now the nearest ancestor that is scrollable is wrapper not the root element which means the wrapper now contains the timeline and again you can imagine that the timeline that arrow that starts from the top of the scroller all the way to the bottom okay so the timeline is in the wrapper because it's scrollable so if we remove the overflow scroll and save the nearest scrolling ancestor should again be the root element so if we scroll the root element it will work as expected but now what if we change the overflow of the wrapper to hidden let's save now scrolling the root element no longer works but why is that and this is actually a common pitfall that we all can fall into and the reason that the root element doesn't control the animation is because it's no longer the nearest scrolling ancestor and in this example the wrapper element is the nearest ancestor but you might ask we don't see the scroll bar here and you are right and the reason it's still considered a scroll container is because overflow hidden still makes the wrapper element a scroll container even though we don't see the scroll bar but what if we want to clip the content without making it a scroll container and there is another keyword for that which is clip so clip is almost like hidden except it doesn't make it a scroll container so as a rule of thumb always use a clip instead of hidden so now the root element is again the nearest scrolling ancestor which means it contains the timeline and it controls the animation so if we try to scroll the root element it will work as expected now let's set it back to scroll now let's say that we want the wrapper to be scroll but we still want to create the timeline on the root element is there a way to do that and the answer yes and that's what's the third keyword for so we have nearest to create the timeline on the nearest scrolling ancestor we have self to create the timeline on the element itself and we have root and this is for creating the timeline on the root element so let's save and try so when i scroll you can see how we are running the animation so even though that nearest scrolling ancestor is wrapper we were able to set the timeline on the root element by using the root keyword here now let's increase the challenge a little bit now what if we wrap the wrapper with another wrapper what element will have the timeline so let's try to find out i'm going to set this to the default value and now let's go down here and we're going to create another element called outer wrapper and we're going to put the wrapper inside of it now let's go to style it so let's duplicate that and we're going to say outer wrapper next let's remove the position fixed from the wrapper so it's only on the outer wrapper now let's change the height of the wrapper to 350 and let's save now when we test it we can see that the timeline is created on the wrapper element because that's the nearest scrolling ancestor and we now know that we can move the timeline to the element itself with the self keyword we can move it to the root element with the root keyword and we can keep it on the nearest scrolling ancestor using the nearest keyword but now what if we want to move the timeline to the outer wrapper and since we can do that with the three keywords that we have on the scroll function we need to think of another solution and here we come to a new concept which is named scroll timeline what we've been using here is called anonymous scroll timeline as i explained before when you use the scroll function you do two things first you create the timeline second you use the timeline or in other words you attach an animation to that timeline now in named scroll timeline you break these two steps into two properties the first is for creating the timeline and you can do that using scroll timeline name so you can say scroll timeline name and you can give it a name you can think of this name as an identifier for the timeline so you can use it now the second property for using the timeline is the same as animation timeline but instead of using the scroll function you would use the name here so let's say my scroller so in this example you can see i'm creating the timeline on the card element and i'm using it on the card element which basically is the same as using self keyword in the scroll function so let's save and try now if i scroll the root it doesn't work the outer wrapper doesn't the inner wrapper doesn't now the element itself it works so using scroll timeline name we can create the timeline but how can we specify its access because if you remember in the scroll function we can pass two things first the scroller where we want to create the timeline for example root and then the axis like inline or block and that works for anonymous scroll timeline 
But what about named scroll timeline? And there's a property for it called scroll timeline access. And for example, we can give it inline. In this case, you have to switch this to horizontal scroll bar for it to work. But now let's keep it block. So you always create the scroll timeline and then you can specify the access for that timeline. And there's actually a shorthand property for it. And it's called scroll timeline in which you can specify the name and then the access. So we can get rid of these two, save, and it should work. So that means with named scroll timeline, we can create the timeline on any element we want. All we have to do is just move this property to the element we want to create the timeline in. So in our example, we want to create the timeline on the outer wrapper. So let's just move this to the outer wrapper. Now if we save, Scroll the root, doesn't work. Scroll the wrapper, it doesn't work. The element doesn't work, but now the outer wrapper should work. And yeah, it does. But now, what if we want to define the animation range? Should we define the animation range in the outer wrapper, in other words, in the element that contains the timeline, or in the element that uses the timeline? The answer is in the element that uses the timeline. So if you try to use the animation range here, from 50% to 100%, it will not work. So if I try to scroll the outer wrapper, it will not respect the animation range. But now if we move it to the card element, it should work as expected. Let's try. So the animation will start when we reach half of the scroll bar. So when you scroll, nothing will happen until you get the 50% and then it will work until the end. And by the way, I'm using here animation range instead of animation range start and end because animation range is just a shorthand for both start and end. But now the question is, why is it the case that the animation range should be defined on the element that uses the timeline, not on the element that has the timeline? And the answer is because defining an animation range doesn't modify the timeline itself. It just defines where the start and the end point should be for that specific animation. That's the first reason. Now, the second reason is that you can create an animation on another element that uses the same timeline. So to show you an example, remember, we have defined the scroll timeline on the outer wrapper and we are using it in the card element. What if we also want to define an animation for the inner wrapper? So when we scroll the outer wrapper, it will change the background color of the wrapper and the card. For the card, we have already defined the animation here. So let's use the same thing, but on the wrapper element. So I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna paste it on the wrapper. And for this animation, I'm going to change the range from 50% to 0%. And I'm going to change the direction of the animation to reverse. Let's try. So you can see that the wrapper starts with red because the animation is reverse. And when we scroll the outer wrapper, the color of the wrapper should change from red to green, but the card should still changing from green to red. Not only that, but since we define the animation range different for the wrapper, so the animation for the wrapper should start as soon as we start to scroll and the card animation should run after we reach half of the scroll bar. So let's try that. And it works as expected. That's it. So we have covered everything we need about the first type of scroll-based timelines, which is scroll progress timeline. In the next video, we will start learning about the other type of scroll-based timeline, which is view progress timeline.